Welcome to Fixit Net. Checkpoints. Today, I'm going to talk about checkpoint and I'm going to show you how to manage checkpoints in Hyper-V servers. So, one of the greatest benefit of virtualization is the ability to use or easily save the state of virtual machine. In Hyper-V, this is done through the use of virtual machine checkpoints. You may want to create a virtual machine checkpoint before making software configuration changes or applying a software update or to install new softwares. If a system change were to cause an issue, the virtual machine can be reverted to a state at which it was when the checkpoint was taken. So there are two different types of checkpoints available. One is called standard checkpoint. The other one is called a production checkpoint. The standard checkpoints technically in Windows 10 Hyper-V that has the facilities of or it takes a snapshot of a virtual machine and its virtual machine memory state. Whereas the production checkpoint, it does check or it does take a shadow volume shadow copy service or a file system freeze on a Linux virtual machine to create a data consistent backup on the virtual machine. But in the production checkpoint, it doesn't create a memory state snapshot. What we do, let's go to the Hyper-V manager and create a checkpoint. All right, so here in the screen, you can see I've got a Hyper-V manager. So in my Hyper-V manager, you can see I'm running multiple virtual machines. The virtual machine that I'm going to work with today to create the checkpoint is this one. So in this virtual machine, if you go and if you see there is no checkpoints has been taken. So let me first connect to this virtual machine. So this is the virtual machine, right? So on this virtual machine, I got a folder right in my desktop. So let me rename this folder as before checkpoint. So I took a, so this is my virtual machine, has got a data in the desktop. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a checkpoint by just right clicking on the virtual machine, go into checkpoint and click checkpoint. So now you can see it's creating a checkpoint. So if you scroll down, you can see it's just about to complete the checkpoint and we can see we have got a checkpoint. So this is where the virtual machine is, but I have got a checkpoint. What I can do is now I can go back to the virtual machine again, right? I'm going to do a small change. Let's say I'm going to add another file here. <clears throat> Let's say another folder. So I'm going to create a folder after checkpoint. So this folder is created after I created the checkpoint. What I'm going to do, so this is something like, let's look at this way. Creating a checkpoint a folder or installing a software is something that I've done a change in the machine. But the change was not expected or it didn't give you an expected outcome. So I am just want to go back to my previous state where I haven't done any changes as so I am more I know my system was working properly. So I wanted to go back to that level. What I can do is I can simply go to my checkpoint. This is just checkpoint tree. This is where I am right now. This is where I took the checkpoint. So in this checkpoint, I have one folder. At this point, I have got two folders. You can see that in the screen as well here. So I have two folders here. If you go back here, I have one folder. If you think yes, this is not the right one. So I'm going to go back to my previous state. So I'll right click and I'll go apply. So this gives you two options. Create a snap a checkpoint and apply or just apply. So if you cre click create a checkpoint and apply, it's going to create a checkpoint with the status, right, the current status, and then apply to the previous status. So you will have a copy of your changes, right? But in my case, no, I don't want to because I've, my configuration hasn't gone through in an expected way. I'm going back to the previous state. So I'm going to just simply say apply. So now what happens is, 
if I go back to my virtual machine, right? So I applied my see you can see it's restoring. So it's restoring my virtual machine. So once it's done, I still have my checkpoint subtree, right? So this is my current virtual machine. This is my previous status. So let's go back to the virtual machine, connect to this computer. So as you can see, I have only one folder, which is I I have this I had this folder before I created the checkpoint. So that's mean I've gone back to the previous status. But the problem is when you apply the statuses or when you apply the checkpoint, it will still keep your existing checkpoint snapshots. So that's going to waste your resources or it's going to waste your storage. What you can do is you can just go and delete it because you know this is your current status where you have got exact copy of um, your um, virtual machine or your computer um, before you have done the changes. And here again, this is also pretty much the same copy. So you don't need to have this uh, snapshot. So what you can do is you can just go right click and delete the checkpoint. If you have multiple checkpoint and you want to just delete everything, then you can go subtree. But here it's only one. So I'm going to click delete checkpoint and I'll say delete. So now my checkpoint is deleted. I've gone back to the computer state where I had just one folder in the desktop called before checkpoint. So this is a very handy way of working. The advantage is you can do anything. You can do any changes before you do make sure you create a checkpoint. Once you create the checkpoint, don't worry, go back and do all the changes. Once everything is finished, if you get an unexpected outcome, go back and apply your changes or apply your checkpoint to their previous state, delete your checkpoint, go back to the normal one. So it's a very handy tool, a handy technology that helps us to work with multiple changes. So I hope that helps you a lot and make sure please do subscribe to my channel and i'll publish some other interesting video in my next one